How about them Cowboys? Mm-hmm. Dallas Cowboys loaded up on offense. They drafted wide out C.D. Lamb. Won't you see these? <laughs> to join Amari Cooper and Michael Gallup. How's that? Now, this week, Cooper detailed some lofty expectations for the receiving core after adding Lamb. So, uh, as he said last year, both himself and Gallup both had over 1,000. Uh, actually, both had over 1,100 yards, to be exact. In or out, it is realistic to believe Dallas can have Three guys over a thousand yards receiving. What do you got? In round? <laughs> I mean, I'm gonna say no out of bounds. That's really hard to do. But if there's no tight end option, maybe it can, you go three wide all the time. But I gotta tell you, so I'm saying out of bounds. Mm-hmm. But if that does happen, then that means Dak is getting paid. That's right. <laughs> like really paid. And I don't know if that's a good thing. So just from a, a competitive uh, roster building, uh, you know, standpoint. Um, is it is it realistic? Not really, but in today's pass happy NFL, um, I, anything could happen. You have Ezekiel Elliott as your running back. I'm not sure that he's going to be happy if that happens. That's the answer right there. You know, I wouldn't be too worried about Dak's contract if all three guys were over a thousand yards. That probably bodes well uh, for Dallas's offense. But I would be worried about the guy a couple of feet behind Dak Prescott who would be chirping over not getting fed. That would be Zeke. So. Um, I think I believe it's realistic in the NFL. I just don't believe it's realistic for the way this team is set up, you know, with, with an offensive line that, that still likes to grate you a little bit in terms of the run game. And, and you gave Zeke all the money. Um, you know, he's, he's not quite McCaffrey. You can make the case that that uh, Saquon's, you know, more explosive. Yeah. You could say, you know, Kamara is very interesting. There's a lot of good running backs, but. Zeke is still absolutely a top five running back, and he's not about to get ignored. And the only way you get three guys over 1,000 would be to ignore a guy who's a superstar. So out of bounds. All right. Michael Porter was one of the most highly touted recruits coming out of high school before a serious back injury caused him to drop from, from in college from a potential – he got hurt like three minutes into his first college yeah. game. Remember that? It was yeah, like right were, away. Weren't you, th- weren't you down there? Well, I was down there. Yeah. I was, not uh, at the game, per se, but. No, no, no. But his his brother played against St. John's. Oh, he that's right. He got that's hurt right. the previous game. That, that's right. That's right. It was like the Disney where they're playing the NBA bubble. It mm-hmm. was at the World Wide, Wide World of whatever, the, the Disney, uh, Mickey's home. <laughs> so Porter got hurt. He, he was supposed to be the consensus first overall pick. He dropped down to 14 by the Nuggets. Now on Monday, and we talked about this, he poured in 37. He grabbed 12 rebounds. And he was also texting his head coach saying, stick with me. Don't, yep. don't give up. Now, and and I guess we're going to call him a little phenom, he added 30 and 15 last night, becoming just the third NBA rookie since 2000 with back-to-back 30-point double-doubles. Wow. In or out, the Nuggets are legit contenders to win the championship this year if Porter's fully healthy. I mean, if the Lakers keep laying eggs like they are, I'm still going to say no. <laughs> I'm going to say out of bounds to this one. Now, you continue to sleep on the Nuggets. I, I'm saying out Come of on. bounds only be, only because of the, 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 the path that they're going to have to go through. You know what I mean? And no, I don't. Whether, it's, whether it's the Lakers, who I do believe get right at some point, um, whether it's the Clippers, who are much better than they have been playing because they haven't even played a full strength yet. And maybe we're going to keep saying that until they get bounced in the yeah. postseason. Yeah. Um, Houston is good oh, stop with as Houston. well, especially. Especially, when, especially if, they, if Russell Westbrook and James Harden are playing like they're playing. I mean, are they legit contenders? Are they contenders? Yes. Legit for the title? Uh-huh. I'm going to say out of bounds. Uh, I'm going to say inbounds here. Mm. I, I loved them last oh. year. Uh, oh. For some reason. Well, I was going to say for some reason they get they don't get the respect they deserve. They don't get the respect that they deserve because their best player is, you know, slow. And, you know, he's no longer heavy, but he still has no yeah. muscle. You know, he's not jumping over you, Jokic. He's not, you know, he's just not this this athletically, in, you know, this, this mesmerizing, highlight-inducing star. He, he's old school. Well, I think Popovich kind of called him like Larry yeah. Bird, which, yeah, which we have to get to. Take it easy, Pop. Take it <laughs> easy, buddy. So I think part of the issue, and we all love Murray and some of the other pieces, but, you know, they're not... They're just not – they're frontline names, but they still aren't perceived as frontline talents, which no, is well, – re- 
which is ridiculous. Jok- yeah. Jokic is a top ten player, maybe top five. Yeah, but what is he? Is he what is he? A big? Yeah, like, is he he's whatever you need him is to he, be. What is he? You know, I had, whatever you need. What's that mean? I was having, having Embiid. M- Embiid is a big. Dude. Well, but then why is he playing on the perimeter, launching threes? Half because the time? Ben Simmons is there, and Ben Simmons can't. And when Ben Simmons went out last week or yesterday, or two days ago, whenever it was, they are significantly better. I think it was last night. Actually, you've been saying this forever. They are significantly only because you watch them. No, no, I'm saying you're, you're right, right about that. They're just better without Ben Simmons, and I don't want to like blame Ben Simmons, but I mean, when Joel Embiid is in the out there by himself without yeah. his other, you know. 6'11", 6'10", point guard, yeah. slash, you know, four. He dominates, man. He really does. We remember this conversation we had about a year ago. Who should the Phillies, yep. uh, uh, the uh, 76ers offense go through? Ben Simmons or Joel Embiid? Joel Embiid. <laughs> you got a big that can dominate the paint like that? You, you let him feed him. Um, so he's a big. Jokic is like, Jokic is like, eh. A little bit of both. I mean, he is a little bit of both. But, you know, he's got that up and under move yeah. and he's very deft with his footwork. He's not going to, like, crank it back and yoke on no. you. But he'll, you know, he'll sidestep you to death and he'll get a little layup. It's, it's, he, he, is, he is fundamentally brilliant. Yeah, frustrating as hell, I bet, to defend. I'm sure. And here's the thing as we move on. My answer is obviously inbounds. Even without Porter's explosion, I still would have said inbounds. That's how much I respect their culture, their coach, I hear their you. star, and their second play, I best mean, player. 20 points a game. Murray, who everybody raves about, he's averaging under 20 a game. He's a kid. I know he's a kid. So they're, how could, they're not ready to win. Maybe next year? I think they're ready. I do. Uh, as baseball copes with a shortened season, what are the rules they implemented to help preserve arms and keep players safe here, Teague, as we know? Cut games to seven innings when teams have to play doubleheaders. Does mom and dad, do they bring the Gatorades and the uh, the tuna fish sandwiches as well for in between games? I had a tent sitting all the way in the back. I know you did. <laughs> the edge. I remember when you were doing that. Get I off my tent lawn. <laughs> exactly. What was Tiki doing in that tent? <laughs> Yesterday, the Marlins beat the Orioles one zip. Soda. Soda in the uh, in the first half of their doubleheader as, uh, listen, they pitched the ball well, whatever, and then they gave a couple of hits. So, the the pitch the question is this pitchers who throw seven inning no hitters this year should not be counted in the record books. I'm going to say inbounds, inbounds, BT, inbounds. It's not traditional. It, it, the team or a sport that relies on tradition. You cannot have uh, a, a, a one season rule define somebody who had a great night. So I'm saying out of bounds. It, they cannot. No, should not be counted. Yes, inbounds uh, should not be counted. I'm going to keep this tight because I definitely want to get the last one in here. That's out of bounds. I mean, it, it's a rule to rule. I mean, Mr. Yeah, Literal. Yeah, but it's, like, it's not, it's not like, like collectively bargained. No, but I understand that. But you know what, Teak, there's got – listen, the Astros threw a no-hitter against the Yankees back in the day. Like five guys pitched. I mean, there's there's range-shortened perfect games. It is what it is. I mean, if you, what, however long the game is, if you do not give up a hit, it's a no-hitter. I can see why people would challenge that. Trust me, I can see the other side. I get it. Those last six outs when the blood's pumping, the, the sweat beads. I get it. I get it. But I'm going to say inbounds. He pumped out a ton of weight, ballooned 50 pounds, all right? And he's driving the ball 20 yards longer than last year. Now his trainer, Greg Roskup, if I believe is how you pronounce it, told ESPN that he understands why people would chastise or question uh, if he's gaining it illegally, saying, quote, under normal circumstances, you'd say the only way somebody could make those changes is by taking steroids. But I can guarantee you that's not part of the process. It's just been part of the evolution of him being involved in this program. To end of the quote. In or out, it's unfair to DeChambeau to assume his growth is due to PEDs. I'm going to say inbounds to that, BT. I know that people will look at it and say it's unnatural. Um, but his trainer, uh, Raskop, however you say his name, we'll call him Greg. His trainer, Greg, uh, made an interesting point. He said this started about two years ago, and they built this base of strength that he could build upon. And so when he ramped up during COVID because he wasn't doing anything other than lifting and drinking protein shakes, as, yeah. we, as we've heard, it just came on naturally. Oh, so they knew COVID was going to hit us, so they played No, this. they didn't know that. It was just his body was, was 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 prepped for it. And I'll give you the perfect example, BT. When I, You know, I retired in 07 when I tried, tried to make a comeback in 2011 because my body was prepped for it. I put on about 15 or 20 pounds in about five or six weeks. 
And it was only because my body was ready to accept the pounding that I gave to it. I think that's I think it's fair. All so right. I'm gonna say I'm gonna say it is unfair. I'm gonna say that it's that it's out of bounds. It is not unfair, but I don't believe he's doing steroids. But I do believe, given the cynical nature of society, yeah, given all the shortcuts an abundance of athletes have taken through the years. You name a sport, there's somebody who's cheated. I understand why somebody would view this through a cynical prism, but I do not believe that he's taking it. Thanks for watching. Make sure you like and subscribe, and don't forget to hit that bell to be notified when we drop fresh content.